Hi everybody, it's still January 27, 2018. Have you seen this video? California homeless problem? It's a man on a bicycle filming this encampment along the Santa Ana River in Anaheim, California. And this video goes on for 10 minutes. 10 minutes of him driving along uh, or riding his bike along, filming. All of the homeless in just this one area. It's really pretty shocking. Though, are any of you surprised? I posted a video uh, on Kafka Winston World where People were living in their cars in an area where there's a lot of tech companies, these companies that make a fortune. And they were living in their cars because they could not find affordable housing. But they were working for the tech companies. I, it's frightening what's happening. The richest nation in the world. Here we are. So they're going to be getting rid of this encampment for the homeless. And well, California officials just don't know what to do about the growing problem of more and more people going homeless. They're stumped. They just don't know what to do. But it goes on for 10 minutes. You can watch more of it by clicking on the link below. But it was on Zero Hedge a couple of days ago. And this article, uh, despite the record stock market, right? We actually claim that the stock market that's the measure of whether or not our economy is doing well when we know our stock market is deliberately manipulated. Um, yeah, it's we have unemployment at 4.1%. I do not believe that statistic at all. That would suggest that a majority of our population is working. And I guess the 4.1% are living in tents, right? Is that what we're to believe? The article, I'll leave the link below and you can read it, but it's hard to read what is said about the homeless in this, in this country. Um, the person who was on the bike 
reported that this once popular um, or he was once a popular outdoor enthusiast and the families which you know enjoyed that stretch of beach now it has become unsafe as miscreants miscreants plot assaults and robberies on passing riders even laying trip wires across the path. You read these comments below and you see an awful lot of presumption and judgment and hatred towards those who have nothing. The haves, the people who are still comfortable. Um, drug addicts, mentally ill, the, I, and the comments go on forever, forever. I mean, there's a whole lot of them, pages and pages of comments on this one article on Zero Hedge. It sure does go on. One of the comments I read, most of those people are burnouts and fiends who pissed away every viable opportunity to make a life for themselves and now they have no desire to work or try to climb back into society. If you're such an asshole that not even family or close friends will take you in to help you back on your feet, you may deserve to be homeless. <sighs> you know, I went homeless and you really get a whole new perspective on homelessness. You get a whole new perspective on Americans. I face so much judgment. People who didn't ask any of the details about my experience, my life experience, I was judged as lazy. I was judged as doing this to myself. I was judged as the unworthy. My family put me in that situation. The, you know, severity of the malignant narcissism. And I'm the scapegoat. They literally worked for a little under a year to get me homeless. And then you have to face the judgment of everybody else. They telling you that you're doing things wrong, or you're not doing what you should be doing, and da, 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 and but they don't even know you. You get, you've already been destroyed by the FDA putting medications on the market as safe. They give you a stroke. You end up with a lot of medical problems. You have to end your career as an attorney. You have that family that then come after you because you're vulnerable now. And they come after you in the most vicious way and work for years to make sure that you never get back on your feet again. They manipulate this whole big scenario going your last year in Great Barrington, you go homeless and then you have to face all of the judgment of everybody else that doesn't understand at all. And they don't want to. You're broken. You lose your confidence. And every person that you face along the way that judges you for what has happened, they not understanding all of the external factors that put you right in that circumstance, they beat you down further and further and further. So when I read that comment, not even family or close friends will take you in. Right.
it's uh, it's so sad what we've become here in our country. This person making up all of this stuff in his own head so that he can feel better. The comfortable always feel more superior to those who have lost. And you can really get it when you are the one who's vulnerable. Then you read comments where they say, well, people offer them help and they just don't want it. They want to be homeless. Not understanding. Not understanding anything. There's a lot of people who, who don't want to go into shelters for fear of what's going to happen to them in the shelter. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of robbery. There's a lot of people who get sick from other people sick in shelters. But does anybody ask why? Why don't you want to go? I have a bed. I have shelter. Here, go. And the homeless person says, no, thank you. And boom, they're judged. Oh, so you want to be out on the street? Fine. <laughs> and considering what's happening with the economy, so we have mainstream media telling everybody that the economy is doing fabulous. And there's so many opportunities for people out there, they just piss them away. Um, here's a map. Total people experiencing homelessness on a given night in 2017. California has the most. And they do get a lot of homeless coming from other states because if you're living on the street, you're not going to be wanting to live on the street in Maine during the winter. Look at these numbers. 23,548 23, in Texas, it's more because of Hurricane Harvey. 134,278 in California, it's more because of the fires. Here, how about families? Total family households experiencing homelessness. Whole families experiencing homelessness. Children homeless. Are they schizophrenic and mentally ill? And But there's so little compassion and so little understanding and you really do need to understand the details of what has happened to a person because if you don't well you could inadvertently hurt them because you don't understand them. So the offers that you make if you don't understand the person then you make an offer and they say no and then they get mad at you. They don't even understand why you said no. Um, they don't want to know what really happened. That takes time and energy for somebody to actually know someone. So they, it's easier to just judge people. It's easier to say it's the individual's fault and something's defective in them. It, it's easier to do that because then you can walk away and feel okay. Still feel like you're a good, caring, compassionate person. And so many, the, the increase in homelessness since the crash in 2008 has increased so much and we had banks, banks, stealing people's homes. And then we had an attorney general who said, we're not going to prosecute bank fraud. It would hurt the economy. So the stealing of homes continued. 
and people went homeless because of the crimes committed by our government and by banks and so many lost their jobs because of the deliberate agenda to outsource jobs to other countries. We've had so many, so many weather events that left people homeless. But no, they've had all of these opportunities that pissed it away and they're mentally ill and they're, you know, just wanting to be homeless and they're schizophrenic and they're substance abuse abusers and they're this and they're that. <laughs> so I'll link below to this map and you can check out the chronically homeless, how many there are, unaccompanied young adults, experiencing homelessness, families, veterans. The number of homeless people in America increased for the first time in seven years. And California is behind the surge. December 21, 2017. For the first time in seven years, the number of people without a safe, regular place to sleep in America has grown on any given night in 2017, nearly half a million people across the country were homeless, living on the streets can often be a death sentence. And in fact, California's Santa Clara County, home to Silicon Valley's 76,000 millionaires and billionaires, and the county with the largest income gap nationwide has seen a dramatic surge in the number of homeless deaths. Vast majority are unsheltered. Unsheltered meaning they're living on the streets, under freeways, tucked into grassy fields, parks, and cities, and in tent encampments. They're dying because of significant hepatitis A outbreaks. And the homeless population is aging. Since 2011, Santa Clara had 132 people die on the street. And is it so hard to believe that they might be uh, putting disease into these homeless populations to kill them off? Yes, the homelessness in America, they're, they're getting older. The graying of America's homeless. The baby boomers. They lean unsteadily on canes and walkers or roll along the sidewalks of Skid Row in beat up wheelchairs. Past soiled sleeping bags, swaying tents, piles of garbage. They wander the streets in tattered winter coats, even in the warm warmth of spring. They worry about the illnesses of age and how they will approach death without the help of children who long ago drifted from their lives. It's hard when you get older. Everything gets harder when you get older. Homelessness in America, they're getting older. 306,000 people over 50 living on the streets in 2014. It's a 20% jump since 2007. Family broken down. This is what it reflects. The family is gone. And it's quite easy for people to turn their backs on one another. Especially when you think that the individual in need of help, they did it to themselves. Homeless explosion on West Coast pushing cities to brink. Housing prices are soaring here thanks to the tech industry, but the boom comes with a consequence, a surge in homelessness. Homelessness. Yeah, when rents are so high, when you have all this gentrification happening in, in, in major cities, people are getting tossed out. 
evicted because landlords want to raise the rents. We saw after the fires in California, what happened? So many people were needing because they had their house leveled to the foundation. They needed to rent places and the rent soared. So is greed not a factor here in our country that leaves people homeless? The homeless crisis is rocking the entire West Coast, pushing abject poverty into the open like never before. Public health is at risk. Several cities have declared states of emergency, and cities and counties are spending millions, in some case billions, in a search for solutions, but they can't seem to come up with any. It's getting worse. People who were once able to get by, even if they suffered a setback, are now pushed to the streets because housing has become so expensive. All it takes is a prolonged illness, a loss of job, a lost job, a broken limb, a family crisis. What was once a blip in fortunes now is a life sentence. That's because our economy is just so great. And that's because we live in such a caring and compassionate country. <clears throat> California, Oregon, Washington. Total about, <clears throat> excuse me, 168,000 homeless for those three states alone. But, but only, um, only about 50,000 are able to s find shelter. 100 and 5,000 are unsheltered, an 18% increase since, I think, 2015. Rising rents, the main culprit. It's not mental illness. It's not substance abuse. It's not because people are just pissing away their opportunities. It's because something is morally wrong. If we had a moral compass at one point, we are showing that we have nothing, no moral compass anymore. So you read the articles. I went, you know, Northern California, we know that there has been, you know, a great increase in the homelessness. Wildfires exacerbate chronic homelessness. You know, when you go homeless, it is so degrading a experience, especially in this country, when success is measured by the material things that you have. It's not measured by the integrity, the principles that you live. No, it's only measured by the material, the house that you have, the car that you drive, the clothes that you wear, the job that you have. And when you go homeless, you do face. It's a whole other world that you live in. And you can have circumstances that have nothing to do. I don't drink. I don't take drugs. You can have circumstances that really, uh, the circumstances that you find yourself in, you know objectively it's tragic what happened to your life and yet nobody responds that way. And then you think about all of the other people who have lost their jobs and homes that also went homeless. And you know that they're facing the same thing. So all the people who went homeless because of the fires in Northern California, they then come upon articles on Zero Hedge and they read 
they read how their fellow Americans, what their fellow Americans feel about them. And if you're alone, it's worse because you don't have anybody to pick you up. So hopefully the people who have lost their homes and have gone homeless have family and you can, you know, create that that support that you so desperately need. You know, your own family members or significant other, you know, you're picking one another up. But alone, it's much harder to get back on your foot feet. So that's Northern California. I did, you know, the same Google uh, search except changing the word northern to southern and I come across this the homeless created the fire in southern California that's right northern California they're still saying it's going to take months before they can come up with the cause of those fires and we all know that those fires were deliberate we all know that but here, the Southern Californias, yeah, it was started by a homeless encampment, by, by a homeless person who, who lit a fire, a cooking fire. Yeah, that homeless person, somehow by lighting a fire to cook his meal, he was able to start fires simultaneously, miles apart, all these different fires that started. And that fire from just, you know, illegal cooking. Literally decimated homes right to their foundation and everything in the home. And somehow they were really, oh boy, these homeless people, they can start fires that leap over trees and bushes and grass and parking lots and just go right into that house. And then you have all these people who could care less about the truth. They don't want it. They don't want the truth about the homeless that they so degrade. And they don't want the truth about these fires. And they don't want the truth, you know, about anything. So Harvey, Hurricane Harvey. More than 20,000 children in Houston, homeless. This was November, the end of November. And Hurricane Harvey, well, it created far more homelessness. More than 30,000 homeless in Houston. Um, and the surge in homelessness after Hurricane Harvey was putting a lot of pressure on all of the homeless shelters and homeless advocates. And they say it was 40,000 homes got destroyed. It was over a million. So we have far more homeless people than our government tells us than the statistics show. And it's all a deliberate creation to destroy this country. And then we have Americans who destroy their fellow Americans with their judgment, their cruelty, their not caring. It's very sad.